Welcome, Irish fans, to this week's edition of the Joe Schmidt and Jack Swarbrick Show. On today's show, we'll talk with a man who is beginning his 16th season as the head men's basketball coach at Notre Dame, Mike Bray. Coach Bray's Irish are coming off the best Notre Dame basketball season in more than 35 years, so there is a lot to talk about with Mike. But first, to start things off, here are your hosts, Notre Dame captain and starting linebacker Joe Schmidt and Notre Dame vice president and director of athletics, Jack Swarbrick. Captain Schmidt, good to be with you, man. <laughs> Mr. Swarbrick, what's going on? Seven and one. It's a good. It's a yeah. good place to be at uh, at the eight game mark. It is. It's you know. It's still the eight game mark. I think uh, that's something that we need to make sure we remember. Uh, but it's it's exactly where we want to be uh, right now. Looking into the last you know four games here of the season, uh, you know, with a big game coming up this week at with this weekend at Pittsburgh, and and we're looking forward to it. We're excited. Another game you had in the bag the entire way. Yeah, been, yeah, yeah, right. Seriously, no, no absolutely drama. no drama. There's, there's been no questions that Showtime scripting our games. But <laughs> I want to, I want to thank you for holding the TV audience. The ratings are great. <laughs> you know, it, it helps the business model to yeah. be able to say, look at these ratings. I know. I think I, we really we go into games obviously thinking about the ratings. So <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're like, how can we, how can we do this? Entertain the fans for longer. Uh, but no, really, hats off to a great, uh, great Temple team. Um, they were extraordinarily well coached, and they really cared a- about about that game. And and I know that me saying they really cared sounds like, um, you know, people would ask me, is that is that a, is that a difference? Um, but you'd be surprised as that you know you know as to you know week in week out you play people, and and you can actually tell that there's a quantifiable difference between you know the amount that people are caring. And I think it's a uh, you know it starts with like you know their their offensive linemen they knew all of our. Uh, defensive players first names and they were addressing <laughs> us by first names throughout the whole game and it was I, I, you know it's just it wasn't like it wasn't so much trash talk but just little conversations that were just out of the ordinary and fun so we had a good time with it asking about family and stuff yeah right? exactly they do like personal <laughs> details and and uh you know you'd be at the bottom of the pile and some guy would come and would start asking me hey joe like what did you think about that play like I, I was just laughing so it was a good time yeah well they were uh they certainly were as you said they gave you know it's as uh as we were prepared for as as we indicated on this show last week a really well coached very tough team very physical oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, we knew we were going to play all four quarters. Yeah, no, and, and that's, you know, they kind of embody that that toughness, you know, that, that Philadelphia mindset of, you know, hard work. And, um, and, and so they really, they, you know, they, they came to play starting with, the, you know, the first quarter, and, and, and we knew they were a fourth-quarter team. So uh, they were uh, they're a team of, re- of veterans that had been able to come in, you know, come into games, get them late into the game, and then win them in the fourth quarter. And, and so we ended up, you know, kind of using that, uh, using their own little, uh, their own way of winning uh, against them there and, and come out with a victory at the end. Uh, thank gosh for, for Will Fuller. Well, you know, the, I was going to say the script had some pretty similar elements for us, right? We're getting a little used to these, which is, uh, uh, you know, a, a big late drive culminating with a pretty remarkable throw to Will. Will made yeah. a great catch, but uh, Deshaun dropped that right in the pipe there. There, there was about, a, about an 18-inch window for him to hit. And then a big defensive stop with uh, Kavari's interception. Yeah, uh, you know that that offensive drive. Um, you know everybody points to that last play, Will making you know uh, you know a great stri- you know uh, strike down the sideline from Deshaun. Um, but really, I look at there was a there was a third down early in that drive that Will you know it was a scramble and Will just happened to find a way to get open. And great players do stuff like that. And you know Deshaun kept the play alive with his legs, found Will along the sideline for. What was what seemed like at the time maybe you know just a, a seven yard gain on the way to you know scoring a touchdown, but without that it's fourth down and and we're probably punting the ball. Um, so it's it was you know it was a huge play and that's the one that I point to just to kind of show like you know this is that's Will Fuller him him being great, uh, but defensively it was great as well. You know another key play on that drive is something <clears throat> we've been seeing in practice, which is the emergence of Alice Oh yeah, uh, on the offensive end, and and that was a huge play in that drive. I know he he he. Really Ran a corner route, and I feel like they just didn't cover him. I, I don't know what if it was a if it was something our coaches had identified in scheme, um, but I remember looking up on the because I, I couldn't quite see Alize's route, uh, you know, over the uh, the our sideline. Obviously, I'm not the the tallest guy in stature, um, so I'm looking at the uh, the wonderful video board that we're about to have here at Notre Dame, <laughs> and uh, and Alize's streaking, you know, through the middle of the field un, unmarked. So it was it was a great play for Alize. I just I felt good, you know, that you know he's he's wanted to do something to help contribute to the team, and, and that was a huge play for us. So yeah, no, it it, it absolutely was, and uh, 
The other play that, uh, you know, I think sort of stuck out for me in the game was um, a reminder. We know it, but 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 it's sort of a reminder and maybe a first introduction for the rest of the country that that big quarterback can run. Yeah. <laughs> when, when those DBs were trying to were trying to catch Deshaun on that uh, on that on that play, they weren't gaining any distance. No, I, I actually think the big guy pulled away. He yeah. was he was rumbling, stumbling, bumbling. That was that was oh my gosh. I mean, I I went up to Deshaun after and I was like, "What's your forty time?" Because I I swear I thought Deshaun ran like a five nine. You know, he he looks he looks like he wouldn't be the fastest guy. Uh, but when he actually gets into the open field, he can really move. And um, he pulled away from a safety and a cornerback uh, that are playing Division One football, and uh, and then of course hit him with the <laughs> with the fly goes fly, which we had to give him a lot of grief for. And uh, hopefully he never does again. Um, but you know, I think after getting a 79 yard run, we can we can forgive him for one uh, one little mistake there at the end. Yeah, and I'm 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 uh, I'm glad the sort of origin of that uh, that. Uh, little gesture got explained is oh, his, yeah, his yeah. long time uh, passion for the Philadelphia Eagles the fu- not, not the Temple Owls yeah no we actually so we all knew it because uh, when we, we got to uh, the link uh, the day before for our little check out the, the stadium see where you're getting taped um, we do that on Friday nights um, Deshaun you weren't we weren't supposed to go onto the grass there was a guy there that was this was his grass and if you went on his grass we were getting in trouble um, and Deshaun had a brand new Eagles hat that he must have just gotten so from you know on the, for the trip, um, and Deshaun you know waits till the guy turns around, runs out onto the on like the into the end zone, puts his hat on and, and has like a little eagle pose and, and takes the picture and runs back. So needless to say, we got a little trouble with the grass guy, uh, but Deshaun is a huge Eagles fan. Well, I must say I feel a little bad because the the QBs came up to me in practice about a week ago and. And Deshaun said, uh, so which of us do you think is the fastest? And, of course, obviously, I, I was saying, uh, well, you know, I, I'm pretty impressed with Brandon's speed. <laughs> I think he won. <laughs> like, wasn't he like the stage champion or? Uh, well, and Deshaun was hurt by that. So I think now I'm feeling bad when I saw his, uh, his in-game speed. But, but, but that was great. <laughs> in-game speed. That's, that's, that's what we'll call it. In-game speed. That's right. Well, we go, uh, we go back to Pennsylvania this week. Right. Um, another really tough opponent but one of the things that's pretty unusual and i it'd be interesting to go back and look over your entire time with us how often we played a noon game yeah it, no, it hardly doesn't ever. happen much no and, and uh so we're doing some things differently in light of that right yeah so um you know one of the great parts about you know being at notre dame is having the ability to change our schedule um you know closer to the game and so we were able to switch our our departure from a normal Friday departure uh, to Thursday to kind of get our 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 clocks our personal clocks uh, set to that that noontime kickoff and so uh, we're we're practicing tonight we're getting out of here we're getting to Pittsburgh uh, Thursday night we're going to wake up and do all a game day on uh, on Friday so we're going to you know a whole mock game day we're going to do our game pregame meal um, all the kind of meetings we do normally before a game, um, and then it's kick off practice at 12 o'clock. Um, and normally our Friday, it's going to be a little bit of a different Friday practice. And I think that's great. You know, Coach Kelly's so good about understanding how best to, to you know, fine tune the team and, and to make sure that we're at our best when we really need to be at 12. So, um, and, and really, I don't, I, I think the last time we played a noon kick was the last time we were at Pitt, um, at, you know, in 20, in 2011. And I, I was actually there and we, we did start slow. Um, and that was a slug fest until the very end. So I think coach is just trying to make sure we don't start slow and, and he does everything he possibly can to help us get on, get on our way there. Yeah. Um, you know, I think our listeners and viewers understand this, but the, the reason for that dynamic is, uh, television loves to move us to the evening games right. for a larger audience. And so we generally on road games don't know until 12 days out. We have no idea what time it is. We got the whole schedule planned. We were planning for at least 3.30, maybe we can start. We get noon. So our earlier guest from earlier in the year, Chad Clunder, has a few things to do. He's, yeah. got, to, he's got to see if he can change the charter plane. He's right. got to see if the hotel can take us a day earlier. I was watching this mad scramble yeah. <laughs> he was going through to try and see if he could make all the logistics work on less than a week's notice at the end of the day, and uh, he's been able to make it happen. Yeah, no, we really do have a great team over there, and I think you know, I don't think Chad's alone. I, I know Chad's working with a, with a bunch of great people, yourself included. Um, and really, you know, the, the best part about this, though, is that it creates extra work for Chad. And, absolutely. and we absolutely love that over at, at the Goog. We, if there's any extra work we can create for Mr. Clunder, it's a, it's a win for us. Well, we did it this week, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, we did. Now, now, 
back to the same state and in some ways back to a similar challenge. A very physical football team, um, great defense. They're going to try and keep the ball away from you. Yeah. A possession game. You know, they want it. They wanted to come down to a few possessions, and uh, so it's it's going to be a game a lot like last week. Oh yeah, and 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 we're familiar with you know this coaching staff. We know their head strength coach. He was just here, uh, Dave Andrews, and, and we we know uh, Coach Narduzzi from his time at Michigan State. So we know the kind of play that or kind of uh, game that they want to play um, at Pittsburgh. And then you, if you turn on the tape, it's it's easy to see right from the start that they're a Smash Mouth football team. Uh, they love running the football. They you know they've got a lot of good uh, playmakers on the outside. They got one of the best receivers in the nation um, and, and really they, they do a great job um, on both sides of the ball you know play, you know just executing a clean football game uh, so we have our work cut out for us and we're really looking forward to playing uh, you know one of those one of those you know big big boy pads you know a lot of haymakers throwing from the hip uh, kind of games against a, a great Pittsburgh team it's going to be a great time well, I know you were interviewed during the week and uh, you, you you reflected a view that's just sort of core to the way we approach it uh, it is one game on a time at a time. We're not looking any further than Pittsburgh, but still a nice sort of uh, recognition of the season to date when the initial CFP rankings came out this week. Yeah, and and, and you know, I, th I think the you know the the hard part for you know a, a, maybe a younger team would be to, to get lost in that. But really, I think as a as a veteran team, we've been around for so long and. And, and we've kind of been in this position. I'm, you know, last year we were seven and one as well, and I think we were we were right in that conversation. I don't remember where, um, but you, you know, really, it doesn't it doesn't matter at all until you're done with the season and you're and you're ready to go into uh, you know hopefully into that into that environment. And so right now we're focusing on Pittsburgh. We got to play a great team and 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 continue to 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 keep ourselves where we where we want to be and, and propel ourselves forward. Well. I, uh, I think it'll be a great weekend. I'm glad uh, we're able to logistically get there in a time to get our body clocks right, and uh, we'll see what happens. Let's take a break and come back with the uh, best basketball coach in America. What do you say? Amen. Let's do it. All right.